my dear friends uh, today in this video i am going to discuss uh, the citizenship act of 1955 and in my last video i discussed about the constitutional provisions of citizenship so those students who did not watch my last video for them link is given in my description box please watch this video because it will be helpful for all of you okay so before starting the video i would like to introduce myself first my name is rajdeep i did in bia third semester and i welcome to everyone in my youtube channel political study and it's my request to everyone that please subscribe my channel so that relevant videos relating to political science will be available to all of you so without wasting much more times let's come to the point citizenship act of 1955 see from the exam point of view this citizenship act of 1955 is very very much important for all of you okay so in my last video if you remember i discussed about article 11 i discussed about article 11 see this article 11 says that parliament has the power to make any law related to citizenship and you know the parliament the parliament used the power of article 11 and made a law and the law is citizenship act of 1955 and my dear friends this citizenship act of 1955 has been amended from time to time and if you see the citizenship act of 1955 you will find two important point first is acquisition of citizenship acquisition of citizen ship acquisition of citizenship means how a person can acquire the citizenship of india and the second point is loss of citizen means loss of citizenship means how a person can lose his or her citizenship and our first point is acquisition of citizenship see there are five ways there are five ways through which a person can acquire the citizen of india first by birth by birth second by descent descent third by registration registration fourth by naturalization naturalization and the fifth is by incorporation of territory incorporation of territory territory so these are the five ways through which a person can Uh, can acquire the citizenship of india that is by birth by descent by registration by naturalization and by incorporation of territory so you have to remember okay you have to remember this five ways through which a person can acquire the citizenship of india understand now let us discuss this five ways of acquiring citizenship and our first point is by birth our uh, first point is by birth see if a person okay if a person born in india on or after 26 january 1950 that means on or after the commencement but before 1st july 1987 then he is a citizen of india that means if a person if a person born in india between these two dates okay if a person born in india between these two dates then he is a citizen of india irrespective of the nationality of his parents this is the first date this is the first date now see the second date says that if a person born in india on or after 1st july 1987 see the second uh, date says that if a person born in india on or after 1st july 1987 then he is considered as a citizen of india but he have to satisfy one condition and the condition is that either of his parents either of his parents should be the citizen of india that means 
either father or mother should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth. This is the second date. This is the second date. See, the third date says that if a person born in India on or after 3rd December 2004, then he is considered as a citizen of India. But both of his parents, both of his parents should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth. Now, see, try to understand in a very simple way that the first date says that if a person born in India between these two dates, then he is a citizen of India irrespective of the nationality of his parents. Okay, this is the first date. The second date says that if a person born in India on or after 1st July 1987, okay, then either of his parents, either father or mother should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth. The third date says that if a person born in India on or after 3rd December 2004, then both of his parents, okay, both of his parents. The second date says that either father or mother should be the citizen of India, but the third date says that both of his parents, okay, should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth, okay. So, these are the three date or three ways through which a person can acquire the citizenship of India by birth. Now, our second point is by descent. Our second point is by, by descent. See, descent means a person who born outside India. Descent means what? A person who born outside India. See, how a person can acquire the citizenship of India? By descent. So, there are three ways or three dates through which a person can acquire the citizenship through descent. So, the first date says that if a person born outside India, if a person born outside India on or after the commencement that is 26 January 1950, but before 10 December 1992. See, if a person born outside India between this two dates, then he is a citizen of India, but it is compulsory. It is compulsory that compulsory that the father should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth. This is the first date. Okay. The second date says that if a person born outside India between 10 December 1992 to 3rd December 2004. See, if a person born outside India between these two dates, the second date says that if a person born outside India between two these two dates, then he is a citizen of India. But here, either father or mother, either father or mother should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth. The first date says that it is compulsory that the father should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth. On the other hand, the second date says that either father, either father or mother should be the citizen of India at the time of his birth. This is the second date. Now, now the third date says that if a person born outside India on or after 3rd December 2000, Four. If a person born outside India on or after 3rd December 2004, then he have to, he or she have to register within one year of birth uh, at an Indian consulate, then only he or she can acquire the citizenship of India by descent. Okay? So, these are the three ways or three dates through which a person can acquire the citizenship of India through descent. Now, our third topic is by registration. Our third topic is by registration. See, there are some rules, okay. There are some rules through which a person can acquire the citizenship of India by registration. And the first rule says that if a person of Indian origin, person of Indian Indian origin 
person of Indian origin who is a resident in India for 7 years, for 7 years before applying for registration. That means, if a person of Indian origin uh, who has been staying in India for 7 years before applying for registration, then he or she can acquire the citizenship of India by registration. The second rule says that if a person married to a citizen of India and resident in India for 7 years before making an apply, uh, before making or applying for registration, then he or she can acquire the citizenship of India by registration. So, these are the two rules through which a person can acquire the citizenship of India by registration. Clear? So, now let us uh, move to our fourth point and our fourth point is by naturalization. Now, our fourth point is by naturalization. See, it is a very simple just try to understand that a person can acquire citizenship by naturalization if he or she is ordinarily resident in India for 12 years and if they fulfill or satisfy the qualification mentioned in the third schedule of the citizenship act then he or she is able to acquire the citizenship of India. But the important point is that he or she has to satisfy the requirements mentioned under the third schedule of the citizenship act of 1955 then only he or she is able to acquire the citizenship of India. My dear friends, so now our fifth topic is by incorporation, incorporation of territory, by incorporation of territory. See, incorporation of territory means uh, if any foreign country becomes a part of India, then the people of this territory automatically becomes the citizen of India. For example, Puducherry. When Puducherry became a part of India, then the government of India issued the citizenship order 1962 under the Citizenship Act of 1955. Okay. So, these are the five ways through which a person can acquire the citizenship of India. And the five ways are by birth, by uh, descent, by registration, by uh, naturalization and by incorporation of territory. Now, let us uh, move to our second point and our second point is loss of citizenship, loss of citizenship. That means, how a person can lose his or her citizenship. See, there are three ways through which a person can lose his or her citizenship. First is by renunciation by renunciation second is by termination and third is by deprivation so these are the three ways through which a person can lose his or her citizenship that is by renunciation, by termination and by deprivation. Understand? So, my dear friends, now let us discuss the three ways through which a person can lose his or her citizenship. And our first point is by renunciation. See, renunciation is mentioned in uh, section 8 under the Citizenship Act of 1955. So, how renunciation is going on? See, if a person making a declaration to the government of India that I do not want to remain as a citizen of India, then his or her citizenship of India will be rejected or renunciated. But try to understand. See, but if such declaration is made during a war in which India is engaged, then its uh, registration for uh, renunciation of citizenship shall be withheld by the central government of India. So, this is the meaning of the word renunciation and this is this is the way through which a person can lose his or her citizenship by renunciation. So, now our second point is by termination. So, how a person can lose his or her citizenship 
by termination. See the constitution of India provides single citizenship. The constitution of India provides single citizenship. It means that an Indian person can only be a citizen of one country at a time. For example, as India provides single citizenship and as a citizen of India, if I accept or take the citizenship of another country, then my Indian citizenship will end automatically. So, this is how a person can lose his or her citizenship by termination. Understand? So, now our third point is by deprivation. So, the central government of India may terminate the citizenship of an Indian citizen if the citizen has disrespected the constitution. Disrespected the constitution. If the citizen has disrespected the constitution of India, then the central government may terminate his or her citizenship. Second point, if the citizenship has obtained by fraud, then the central government may terminate his or her citizenship. This is the second point. Second point says that if a person has obtained the citizenship by fraud, then the central government may terminate his or her citizenship. Now, the third point says that if the citizen, okay, if the citizen has been staying outside outside India for 7 years. See the third point says that if a person has been staying outside India for 7 years then his citizenship of India will be terminated by the central government of India. So, these are the three ways by renunciation, by termination and by deprivation through which a person can lose his or her citizenship. And the Citizenship Act of 1955 deals with acquisition and loss of citizenship. Acquisition means how a person can, uh, can acquire the citizenship of India and loss of citizenship means how a person can lose his or her citizenship. So, I think that this video is helpful for all of you and if you like my today's video, please click on the like again and if you have any doubt regarding this topic, you can comment me in my comment section and uh, uh, follow me on my Instagram ID and uh, share this video among your friends and for today, I have finished here.